We're here at a little road cut, looking for some, maybe some scap lights and quartz, and then there's some other stuff nearby. But this is the main occurrence. But we'll have to see. Got a chunk of scap light here. Apologize for the uh, the uh, wide view. Uh, my um, regular zoom uh, camera, the the um, cover got fr uh, broken the last time I went out collecting. So it has these weird optical effects. So until I fix that uh, cover, I have to use the either two times zoom or 1.5 times zoom. So I apologize for that. So this is the void I've been digging into just started. Pulled out this big grody looking broken scap light. And then some smaller partial scap lights. There's some amphibole here too. Um, I'm hoping that this stuff fluoresces, so because then that might be worth it. But I'm gonna keep reaching in here. Actually, let's see if I can let's see if I can pull something out with you guys. Because you can see it's just kind of it's a degraded calcite. I'm just hoping that, um, I'm hoping that there's something that's a little less weathered. Just looking for that, that scap light material like this, I believe, is a little fragment of scap light. This might have a little bit of something. But yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you guys if I find anything really good. Here's a chunk of calcite, and you can see the partial scapolite crystal in there. That might come home with me, because if this stuff fluoresces nicely, it's uh, worthwhile to keep. So it turns out this material up here is pretty, pretty uh, loose. So I've just been taking my geo pick like this and just loosening it up. And below this material, there's a vein of you can kind of see it in here. You can see that that's like the calcite with the scap light in it and the further in i go the more jemmy it gets so i'm gonna keep going and hopefully find a nice jemmy crystal of scap light that's my goal i'll at least find one nice jemmy piece i took a chisel and hammer to this material here and you can see there's scap light and you can see already here Pulled out this nice little double terminated. The terminations are a little wonky on it, but it is double terminated. Nice double terminated scapolite. And that, yeah, that's just right below that crumbly layer that I showed you guys. So this is pretty exciting. I'm pretty happy. And we're gonna keep going and see what we can pull out. So we got some scapolites back here. You can see those crystals there. And this chunky crystal is one of those ones that came out of that little section. So hopefully, they look like they're getting a bit jammier, so hopefully they're more solid and more jammy, and I can take them out whole, because that would be really nice. My friend Aaron found this nice specimen with some appetites in it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we should get out of here. We're on the side of the road. <laughs> we also found this piece with some nice quartzy crystals on them. Kind of blobby, but pretty cool. Me and my friend Jacob, we managed to move a lot of material. And, and in fact, I got that one, that one plate with, a plate with that one crystal I was going after, and there's a couple other ones in there. Plus, I got this big guy. This black stuff apparently is alanite, I've been told. So, that's kind of cool. But I'm pretty happy with the, this guy and this guy. That makes the trip already worth it. Now that we have them cleaned up, let's talk about the scapolites. So scapolite is a silicate-based mineral. It has three end members, those being mayonite, maryalite, and sylviaite. For those who don't know what end member means, it basically means minerals that are on the extreme end of their mineral series when it comes to the purity uh, of the chemical composition of the mineral 
A good example of this would be the end members uh, in feldspar, that is k-spar, l-bite, and a northite. And I'll actually throw up a picture showing kind of a diagram of those end members and the mineral uh, species between them. And so basically, that's what an end member is. But getting back to the scapolites in question... Generally, scapolites are a mineral of metamorphic origin. They can occur in marbles and with pyroxenes in schists and gneisses. In this case, for this trip where we were at, I believe the road cut would fall under the gneiss or metamorphic gneiss kind of category. Now, with some scapolites... They react under UV light and fluoresce. There is a different range of colors that scapolite can fluoresce as. These include yellow, pink, red, and orange, though some would argue the pink and the red kind of melt together. Before this trip, I've only ever found scapolite that fluoresces yellow. This is an example of scapolite that I collected that fluoresces yellow under long wave UV light. It also fluoresces uh, yellow under shortwave, but it's a very pale yellow, whereas under longwave, and I'll throw a picture of it, it fluoresces a very nice bright yellow color. This same location where this came from, you know, I actually have videos, uh, or a video of a collecting trip I did to this location, so I'll throw that in the link below. But on the same uh, trip, I actually also found blue scapolite. I didn't find a lot of it and it was only little fragments but it I did find some. Now the blue scapolite doesn't seem to fluoresce. It's the white scapolite around the blue scapolite that seems to fluoresce uh, bright yellow under long wave UV light. Some would call this yellow fluorescing scapolite wernerite but from what I understand that is a kind of an outdated term and now with the scapolites I collected here, I in fact have scapolites that fluoresce another color. These, under short wave light, fluoresce a very lovely bright reddish pink. And I'll throw up an example of this specimen in question. Fluorescing nice bright red pinkish color. And then I'll also throw up a picture of it under long wave UV light because it does have a kind of duller red purplish color as well under long wave. There are some pale yellows in there but I think that's some additional uh, mineralization from something else. I don't think that is actually the scapolite that is fluorescing that color. I think that's just some additional mineralization that came in after. I have to say I'm quite happy with my finds. Now, none of the stuff I found is perfect. You can see on this one, there's some damage there, and there's some like contact damage there from other crystals, even though this one has double turbinations, though they're wonkier turbinations. They're not the nice sharp turbinations. Here's an example with a sharp termination, but then the back has some decent damage and the bottom is damaged too. Well, this is, this is less damage and this is more contact uh, points where it fell off of other, other scapolite crystals it was pressed up against. And this is one of those large ones and you can just see how like worn and weathered these are. And this black stuff, this alanite, I believe, I've been told it's alanite. I might look under the microscope and see if it's interesting. If it is, I'll throw up some pictures. But you can see this crystal is absolutely ugly as all can be. It is quite weathered. It's got damage all over the place. But it is still interesting as a UV specimen at least. And I know where this location is so I could always go back and try and look for some more intact specimens further down in the calcite. Though I will have to say um, Scapolite does feed seem like a pretty uh, sensitive uh, mineral, even though it is uh, it, on the Mohs hardness scale, it is a five to six. 
it still seems like it can if it weathers if it has any weathering it'll just break very easily and crumble away like this is a you can see this is a funky termination on this side and then there's a termination on this side but then this corner bit has been knocked off and like I was pull it most of these pieces I literally pulled out by hand like I didn't even use a hammer and chisel only at the end to extract a couple of the bigger crystals that were, were deeper in and and these specimens just like even just pulling them out of the out of the crumbly calcite matrix by hand they're just falling apart and the calcite matrix that they're in is also quite weathered and crumbly so even if you do extract a nice cluster like this like half of these crystals are uh, wiggly loose so like I have to be very careful handling these specimens and you can see like behind how much material has just like flaked off so this stuff is pretty crumbly and weathered hopefully maybe if I go back in the future I can find a couple more intact specimens now alongside the scapulite I did find one little quartz point you can see it's kind of melty it's not a perfect termination it's like semi semi terminated semi crystallized kind of like those that plate of kind of melty quartz crystals my friend Aaron had that I showed you or that I showed you earlier in the video but it was a little piece that I found in the dirt when I was digging around in a different section quickly at the end. And in that same section, I found this lovely little cluster of uh, feldspar. And ironically enough, this feldspar also fluoresces a nice bright red. I did find one chunk of feldspar in the scapolite pocket I was digging in. There's some fractured scapolite on it, but it wasn't super interesting. But this is a nice clean feldspar with actually some pretty lustrous sides as far as feldspar is considered. So it's a nice little specimen to add to my collection. This brings us to the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you guys are new and you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And please in the description below folks let me know if you found this video interesting and the topic i discussed interesting and please folks just have a wonderful day and i will see you guys in the next video